Hey guys, welcome to Coding with Paul, and today I'm going to tell you the most important question that you should never ask is, am I too old to code, right? The reason why you don't want to ask it is because depending where you are on your life's journey, you might get a very depressing answer. It's not saying that it's too late, but it just might not be the option for you. And the reason why I say this is because some people, you know, might have a family and kids to support. They might have a good job that's good enough to meet their needs. And if they switch positions, they might be putting their family under a lot of stress, right? Because now all of a sudden you are studying a lot. You're not able to put enough time for your wife, your kids, you know, and stuff like that. So that's one, you know, person. Somebody else, you know, same age, right? Could have no responsibility whatsoever, have the availability to study, you know, 24 hours a day, you know, because they're just crazy, they don't sleep, they don't do anything. And for that person, there might be a valid option to continue and dive head first into programming. So basically, it really depends where you are in your life's journey. Now, I'm 37 and I've been coding on and off and learning about this, you know, for four or five years. Did I learn anything? No, but I'm pretty familiar of where to go to find the best resources. I'm pretty familiar with what I want to do. Like, I'm not trying to learn everything. Also, I have a very good role model, uh, a mentor, if you will, who works in the field, who's able to kind of make sure that my compass of getting to where I want to go in my programming, I always stay on the path. It's very easy to get lost if you don't know what you want to do. So for me, starting at 37, oh, by the way, I, my daughter just turned 18. She's off doing her thing. Um, I'm not married anymore. So I do not have responsibilities the same way you would have. So even though for me, it's still very difficult to break into the field, I do have a lot of uh, time that I could, you know, dedicate to this pursuit. And when I say dedicate and time, the minimum is 20 hours a week that you should aim for because that's basically having a part-time job and you need to have that as the minimum and you have to put in your time. Another topic for another video would be like, can you get a job after three months of a boot camp or studying? No, you can't. A lot of these people that are going to these boot camps, they're graduating and getting jobs are the people that were pre-screened, meaning, you know, they probably been studying programming on and off for like five, 10 years, a long time. They have basic understanding. If not, they already know how to do most of that stuff. When they go to a certain bootcamp, that bootcamp probably asks them for prerequisites they need to have to join the program, at least the good bootcamp. So they know they're getting the proper candidates for their program that they know will succeed, that they're not just stealing your money. And those candidates go, voila, they pass the bootcamp and get a job because number one, they already knew enough. Bootcamp was just the cherry, you know, on top of that ice cream that helped them. So please understand this. Don't fall for the hype. And that's why I'm here. I'm a complete beginner. I'm not going to teach you how to code, but I am going to. But I do have a lot of life experience, and I've been involved in other businesses. I just 20 years doing something. I want to do something different. This is something I loved from when I was a kid. I used to practice programming. This is something I enjoy. I'll tell you that story later, but just understand, I have the love for code. I have the love for sitting in front of my computer and banging my head against the keyboard and failing. I love it and it'll never get bored. If you don't have that, again, this is not right for you. But coming back to my original topic is, is it too late? It really depends on you. Are you willing to give up 80% of your life so you could dedicate the majority of everything you're doing to becoming the best coder that you can? Because honestly, if you're not good at your skill, you're not gonna get a job. You might get a job for like a month and then you get fired, right? So it's very important for you guys to understand this. You, there's no easy fix. There's no easy fix. You have to put in the time, you have to put in the work. Once you decide that you're willing to put the effort that is required, then it doesn't matter how old you are, right? If you really wanna do it. I Probably my opinion is like, 37, 40, it's kind of cutting it close. So like I'm like at that tail end of cutting close. That's my personal opinion. I mean, everybody should learn to code. 
It will teach you how to think logically, work through problems logically, very important. But I think if you're in your mid-30s, get on that boat right away. Do not waste any more time and be smart about it, right? And there's a lot of resources to help you with that. I'll talk about it in my other videos, but if you're in your 20s, 100% do it. If you're in your 30s, really think about it. Really think about it, really be dedicated. And then you have to create a path of least resistance. What does that mean? Again, I'll talk more about it in my other videos because this video is getting long, but the path of least resistance, meaning that you're going to do things that will not have the highest competition for you, right? You don't want to compete with someone who's been, uh, you know, let's say in a field for 20 years and you're trying to get a job with three months of bootcamp experience. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to work. So my opinion could be totally wrong. Do and learn. Basically, it depends what you want to do, but I'm just going to talk from my perspective. I picked front end and React because it's fairly new and there's not that many people who have 20 years of React experience. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that you could get into and learn very, very well and not be, you know, outcompete by people who've been doing it for 10, 20 years, right? It's exciting too. It's a new technology. You're still required to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Learn JavaScript very well regardless what you do and react for front end. And then I also, because like I know everybody wants to do exciting things. Not a lot of people, you know, want to do PHP and WordPress, but PHP and WordPress is like a, your safe second. It's like, okay, I'm going to get jobs helping clients set up WordPress sites. I want to know enough PHP to help me know like how to optimize the site for them. You don't have to build it from scratch. Actually, I don't recommend building any PHP site uh, for WordPress from scratch. There's way too many resources that will save your time and you can start freelancing a lot sooner than maybe even being able to get your own job working for a company. So for me, learn new and hot technology that will help me not to compete with the people who've been doing it for a long time and also learn something that a lot of businesses rely to but not as exciting for youngings over there trying to get into the field of programming because to them doing WordPress and PHP sites is boring but you're still gonna make pretty great money especially if you start getting freelance clients so that's my two cents if you like this video give me a thumbs up if it was helpful for you give me a thumbs up if you don't like this video you could hate it as well I don't care but my goal for this channel is to talk about my process of getting into the field of uh, programming, web development, whatever that I'm doing um, at a later age, and more importantly, being very honest and truthful about some of the obstacles that you will have. So take care, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.